Hey everybody, it's Matt again. Figured since I'm snowed in at home or sleeted in at home, I would make uh, yet another video. Thought it'd be fun to go ahead and continue with my ongoing series of reviewing the Beach Boys albums in order. So, come to Surfer Girl 1963, actually released the day I was born, September 16, 1963. This is their third album and uh, the second of three albums that they released in 1963. So uh, kind of funny when you think about it, back in those days the Beach Boys and Beatles and Rolling Stones and all those bands used to, seems like they released a new 45 every month or so and a new album every three or four months and all of them were top of the shelf great music. Nowadays people release new albums every four years or so and usually pretty lousy music. So don't know if there's any correlation or not there but so the first album, Surf and Safari, was, uh, I like it, it's a fun, it's a good debut, it's sort of, uh, nothing, nothing essential, sort of a little bit, uh, insubstantial, but fun stuff. Their second album is kind of more of the same, it does have, um, it does have, uh, Lonely Sea, which is, I think, their first out-and-out -out masterpiece, a wonderful song that, uh, unfortunately wasn't a single or a hit, and kind of gotten forgotten kind of been forgotten but a great song this album is a little bit of a sonic leap this is uh this is of the, the three i've reviewed so far this is the best of the three and my favorite of the three and they sort of uh brian comes on and matures as a songwriter they um uh, and i didn't count here but he wrote again he wrote most of the songs on here i think there is um uh maybe two covers the rest of them Brian either wrote or co-wrote. That'd be Brian Wilson. So we have the band is still Brian Wilson, Mike Love, Carl Wilson, Dennis Wilson, and David Marks. This is the, um, and I wrote that down. I think um, Marks is a little bit on the album after this, but after that he leaves the band. Al Jardine, who had played on their very first 45 and then left the band, comes back and he's not on any of the pictures on the album cover but he does play on a few of the songs on this album and on the next album up that we'll get to after this one he rejoins the band full time there so um yeah this is a this is a big uh, jump forward i think in production and the vocals and the songwriting uh they still have uh it's still kind of pre-beatles as far as America, by September of 63, the Beatles had already made singles and albums over in England. Nobody in America really knew who they were yet. Uh, so this is that uh, sort of pre-Beatle era of music still. And you got to think that the Beach Boys at this time, this is their third album. They've had hits with their first two albums and several of their 45s. So they're doing good. They're pretty much top of the pile music-wise at this this point in time that's all about to change with the British invasion here in about three or four months from the time this album was released but uh, you know you hear people talk about the early 60s as being sort of a barren uh, not very interesting period of music to some extent that's true because all the 50s guys Elvis had gone into the army and been tamed I kinda never don't like his stuff as much post army even though he had some good songs. Chuck Berry is messing around with a girl and taking her across state lines, so he got in some trouble. You know, Jerry Lee Lewis was messing around with a girl who also happened to be 14 and his cousin, so he was kind of out of the picture. Little Richard found God and gave up rock and roll for the time being. And Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Dot Bopper, of course, uh, died in a plane crash. So you got uh, early 60s, you got a lot of clop, the whole Fabian and Bobby Rydell and those sort of empty teen idols, sort of like music now, you know, uh, sure they were probably better than music now, but they weren't very good. It, Pat Boone, some sort of lame stuff like that. But in the early 60s, you had a lot of great jazz. You had Coltrane, Miles Davis still going strong. You had a lot of the great girl group stuff, uh, you know, the Dixie... Dixie Cups and all the Shangri-Las were coming around pretty soon there and and the Ronettes and so forth. Phil Spector is already producing some pretty great records. You had the beginnings of Motown, uh, Shop Around by the Miracles and and uh, Please Mr. Postman, which the Beatles will cover later. And uh, you had Bob Dylan, you know, 
starting up. I think his first album was uh, 62, I believe, his debut, because I know that um, I know that uh, Free Willing was 63. So you had good music. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as on top of the charts, Beach Boys were pretty much the big dogs on the block at this point. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this album, like the two that preceded it, was pretty successful. It went to number seven in the United States, and it went to number 13 in England, but it was not released until a few years later. It was released in 1967 in England. So we will go through. The album starts with the title track, Surfer Girl, one of my absolute favorite Beach Boys songs, and one of my favorite songs of all time. It's just a uh, very uh, atmospheric and beautiful and wonderfully performed song. It's um, looking at my notes. Uh, th this is the Beach Boys in all their glory, and uh, and they kind of arrive fully formed. Whereas there's hints of the Beach Boys on the first two albums, but whereas the Beatles and the Stones were made better debuts than the Beach Boys debut, they were still sort of a work in progress. And by the third album here, they're 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 there. They're they're the Beach Boys, and uh, so. Um, it's the best song that they've written so far in their career, I think, in my opinion. Lonely Sea was, was the first out-and-out -out masterpiece, and that's a great song, but Surfer Girl is their their best up to this point. Um, it's uh, your typical teenage boy's enamored or in love or has a crush on a girl, but it seems to have a more uh, grown-up or wistful outlook or take on the subject than just your typical Susie Q in school and she's real cute type songs. So it shows uh, Brian's growing as a songwriter and uh, Brian sings lead on it. This is the first song that Brian actually wrote, or so he says, before the Beach Boys. Uh, first song is it was released as a single and it's the first song that Brian is credited with as having produced, even though he did a lot of production work on the first two albums. Uh, song is not about any specific girl, so Brian said, and he said that it is based on the old Disney song, When You Wish Upon a Star, which if you listen to the two songs, you can kind of tell where there's a little bit of similarity there. Great song. I mean, it's just a perfect 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Next song on side one, second song on the album, Catch a Wave, which we've all heard was another another hit there. Uh, let me see, these got to, uh, I don't know if I put that on there, but the um, single Surfer Girl also went to number seven on the charts. Catch a Wave charted, I believe, but I'm not sure where it got to. Uh, love that. Uh, I like the... Uh, Catch a Wave is a good song. It's uh, nowhere near the class of Surfer Girl, but it's a good song, and it's one that shows up on the radio we've all heard. I like the little do -do 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 -do, little cheesy organ motif there that plays throughout the song here and there. Nice little guitar uh, bit. Probably a B3 organ they're playing, I'm not sure. Maureen Love, who is Mike Love's sister, plays harp on this song. So, And Al, Al Jardine appears on this song. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's it's uh, it's in line with their hits on the first two albums, Catch a Wave. Um, third song, The Surfer Moon, which is one I hadn't heard before. Um, it's your typical teenager in love lyrics again, kind of 50-ish, pre-Beatle, early 60s type song lyrics. A really nice, beautiful ballad. Uh, Brian sings lead again, which is which is a good thing. Uh, this reminds me of the, the movie Animal House because, you know, the film Animal House takes place in 1962, so you get a lot of early 60s pre-Beatles music theme from A Summer Place and, of course, Louie Louie and things like that, but some uh, early hits, and it, it sounds like something that, just that type of music, it really could have fit in to the Animal House soundtrack, I think, but not so much being in the movie, it just reminds me of that era which, I mean, I wasn't alive in 62, but just my idea of that era, I guess. So cool. Uh, we move on to number four song, 
which is South Bay Surfer. Yeah, South Bay Surfer, which is a weird little song. Uh, it uh, sounds like the song Way Down Upon the Swanee River, only set to a surf rock and roll beat. So it's a um, it's, it's so-so song. It kind of name checks a lot of cities. Yeah, which is always kind of lazy songwriting, the Hey Philadelphia, Hey Alabama, Hey New York, and the idea being that everyone's going surf crazy because the Beach Boys and the other surf bands had started the surf music craze, which was at, kind of probably at its height about this time. So the surf craze is spreading throughout the nation, and hey, check it out in Chicago and Cincinnati and blah, blah, blah. The song's just okay. Uh, the Rocking... Surfer is the next song up. It's an instrumental. It's a pretty nice instrumental. They had had uh, several instrumentals. They had a lot of instrumentals on their second album and some really good ones. And uh, I've already forgotten, but I think they have one or two on their first album. Uh, it's, 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 it's a nice instrumental. It doesn't really add anything or detract anything. It's just sort of there. It doesn't stand out, per se. Uh, a little Deuce Coop. Closes outside one, sixth song on the album. Brian said that's his favorite Beach Boys car song because at this point they were writing about surf music or surfboards and the beach, and they're writing about hot rods and cars, and of course girls and so forth. But uh, it's um, well, Brian Wilson described it as it's got a good shuffle rhythm and a bouncy feel. This song made it to number 15 on the charts when it was released as a single. Little Deuce Coop's a good one. It's not one of my favorite Beach Boys song, but it's certainly not a bad one. So side two opens with In My Room, the other masterpiece on this album. Um, and it's also because the Beach Boys at this time, their public persona is all fun in the sun and surfing in the ocean and hot dogs and hanging out at the beach with cute girls in bikinis and driving around in hot rods and after school with your friends and fun, fun, fun and all that. Uh, in my room sort of gives an early indication that all is not exactly well in paradise with Brian Wilson, you know, because of his problems with his fellow bandmates and his dad and his, his, um, just, just depression and so forth, I guess. So, uh, it's his most advanced lyrically song of the time. And it's a very, Strange, uh, kind of more of an, again, a, he's 20, 21 years old at this point, and he's writing from a much older person's perspective, I think. So um, it's, uh, it's a great song, though, you know, and I mean, you can just look at it as everybody likes to, especially when you're a kid, you've got the privacy of your room and so forth. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next song is Hawaii which is uh, basically inconsequential little song that is uh, neither here nor there. It's just kind of an, almost like an ad for visiting Hawaii. Not a very good song. Uh, can compare this to Holiday, Holiday in Waikiki on the Kinks album Face to Face, which would come out three years later in 1966, a much better song if you're looking for songs about Hawaii. Not sure how many people are, but there you go. Uh, next song up is called Surfer's Rule, which is uh, not a great song, but Dennis Wilson sings it, and the couple of times that he's handled lead on uh, one song on the first album and one on this one, they've always been kind of fun. So it's a fun song, it's a nice song, it's no great shakes, but it's a pretty pretty fun little song. Uh, same thing, the next song up is called Our Car Club, which is just a fine little song and nothing more, nothing less. Uh, okay, what is a, Your Summer Dream is the next song up, and it's just a really nice, another really nice ballad and pretty solid song, pretty good, good, good thing there. The uh, last song is called Boogie Woody, and uh, it's an instrumental, but it's a little out of character for the Beach Boys because it's got this great kind of barrel house piano a uh, really energetic song, and then it sort of uh, slips into some surf music and back into the just pounding barrel house piano that doesn't really sound like the Beach Boys at all, other than the surf interludes parts. 
uh, fun instrumental, a lot better than um, than uh, the other instrumental, which is Rocking Surfer. Uh, but good way to end the album. So you got some solid songs on here. You got you still got some throwbacks to the first couple of albums, but uh, the songwriting's advanced. I mean, uh, Surfer Girl and In My Room is uh, really Brian Wilson growing by leaps and bounds as a songwriter. And uh, it's kind of funny because you've got, at this point, even the Beatles in England and, uh, you know, other bands around are still kind of in the boy meets girl, boy falls for girl type lyrics. And and um, In My Room is, is a little more uh, complex lyrically than, than those type of songs. And Surfer Girl is too in its own way. So... Uh, I'm going to go, there's some fluff here, but there's some really great stuff. This is the best album of the three so far, or their best album so far to this point in their career. I'm going to give this a nine, and uh, yeah, check it out. It's uh, This is their first really solid effort, top to bottom, even with the fluff and the flaws. Uh, I really like the first two albums a lot, but there is a lot of filler on both of them, and uh, there's some nice little surprises that are outside of the hit songs, but... Uh, so there, uh, and there's your cover, there's your back cover, this is taken from the photo sessions from the first album, they just uh, didn't use those pictures so they used them on their third album, and uh, so yeah, the Beach Boys saga continues and be back with some more reviews in time soon, and I will also hope to finish off the kink soon and get to the jam.